From super catchy dance challenges going viral on TikTok to shorter bite-sized songs, we're seeing all sorts of new trends that would have blown older generations' minds. The K-pop world doesn't stand still, and every new generation of idols throws in their own twist, keeping things fresh. Let's look into what's hot in K-pop right now and things that are becoming more common nowadays. Dance challenges Dance challenges are everywhere in K-pop lately, from BDS Asuka's High Gum Challenge with so many idols which, let's be honest, none of us expected in the first place, to Kai's Rover Challenge going viral. These dance challenges are becoming more and more common in K-pop. But are they here to stay? Many idols wouldn't like the sound of that. With EXO's comeback right around the corner after what feels like forever, they're apparently terrified of the dance challenges they would have to do. Like full-on war flashbacks, Kai was the only chill one because of all the Rover Challenges he did before joining the military. and even he admitted that it took him a ton of effort to overcome his anxiety and invite people to do the rover challenge. Thanks to Twice's live stream, we are getting the real tea on these challenges and well, they're not all sunshine and rainbows like fans think. Chaeyoung had to do 10 whole challenges as punishment for failing a mission on tour and obviously, memorizing other girls' dances is hard work. She even admitted to turning down Stray Kids' Changbin because the dance was too much. Twice's whole conversation was fascinating because it goes against the usual fan narrative. They made it clear these challenges can be stressful, learning dances, feeling awkward, the pressure to get it right. It all adds up. Rapper Seiko also apologized recently to all the K-pop singers for starting the trend of TikTok dance challenges. Zico is known as a pioneer of these challenges since he did a choreography challenge with Hawasa, and it became a massive hit. Since then, the dance challenge trend has become a major marketing tool for every new release. Zico said that idols usually use the time between performances to relax, but now they have to go and meet other idols because of the challenges and know each other's choreography. The good news is that it seems like some idols still have fun with them. Jesse and Hawasa's challenges also look like a blast, and you can totally tell when idols are actually friends doing a challenge together, like the Yana and Yuki hug or the happy reunion of Vips and G Friend from the Maniac Challenge. Bakum from EXO is also all about practicing another group's dance for a challenge and 17 and Stray Kids absolutely love to sell their takes to the internet whenever there is a new trending song. Challenges are usually done by members of different groups and it would have been massive just a few years back when even a simple interaction between idols used to break the internet. No more fixed positions. If you started following K-pop a few years back, you must be aware of what a big deal positions used to be. Each member of a K-pop group is often given one or more specific official positions like lead vocalist, lead rapper, main vocalist, main rapper, main dancer, sub-vocalist, leader, and visual. These fixed roles signify the importance of each member and aid in showcasing each member's unique talent. However, a new trend that started emerging a few years ago in some K-pop groups is that there are no official positions and everyone is considered to be an all-rounder. Groups like TXT, Blackpink, and Hyphen New Jeans are prime examples. Some fans preferred the fixed position, saying that it gives each group structure and something it's cool to see rappers sing and vice versa. The issue with fixed position is that they can become outdated after a while, especially when rappers who can sing never get to showcase their skills in group songs. For those rappers who go solo, it comes as a huge surprise to fans that they can sing as well. Back in the day, having the visual role was kind of like being the official pretty person and brands used to chase them to become brand ambassadors. Though with newer groups, ditching those trick roles, everyone is getting a shot at endorsements. Now it is common for all idols to get brand deals even if they are not the official visual member of the group. Likewise, the idols who are known for their deep vocals are can surprise by doing some impressive high notes, crazy expensive concert tickets. The good old days of K-pop concert where Big Bang tickets were under $100 are long gone. Now it's like trying to win the lottery just to snag a ticket. I used concerts sold out in 5 minutes but magically how the stadium was suddenly full of resale tickets. The prices were so insane that even fans who purchased tickets for standing room only had to pay $400. For N. Hyphen's recent concert, some tickets were priced at $700 which left many people shocked. NCD 127 tickets used to be $27, but now for NCD Dreams concert, they're charging an extra $100 for every ticket. The prices have become so absurd, with one fan coded as saying, with these prices, Hachan better be buying me dinner after the show. But in the near future, we may see K-pop concert tickets available only through a lottery system. The National Human Rights Commission of Korea is reportedly considering the ticketing lottery system to eradicate ticket scalping, where people buy tickets and resell them for higher prices like we're seeing now many big group companies are supporting this system and also planning for fan club exclusive ticketing. So considering this, the days when attending concerts of your face will be like winning the lottery are not far away. Short songs Releasing short songs is everywhere these days, and K-pop's not immune to it. All of the new K-pop songs have definitely gotten shorter on average. This year, even some big names like Perfume, Queen Card, Rover, and the whole Get Up album clocked in under 3 minutes. Thanks again to TikTok, the trend of shorter content is also shrinking the music. 
Songs used to be like five minutes long back in the day, but companies don't care anymore about fully fleshed out songs. They just want quick streams and big numbers, which short songs seem to get. Producers are also focused on having just one catchy hook in their song that will go viral on TikTok and Instagram instead of making songs that are good from start to end. And the way everyone is jumping on the bandwagon, this trend, unlike the dance challenges, is probably here to stay because everyone wants that viral hit. Shorter songs are fine as long as they don't feel unfinished. A perfect example would be G Idol's Queen Card, which is just 2 minutes and 41 seconds short, making it literally half of what the song's length used to be a few years back. It is shocking how short it was, but it has everything versus pre-chorus, chorus, repeats, and even a cool outro. The same goes for their hits like Tomboy and Nude, which are all under 3 minutes but totally satisfying. But there are definitely some misses under 3 minutes. Sister 19's No More 2 Minute 40 Seconds cuts off right before a final chorus and leaves you wanting more. And Hyphen's Bite Me 2 Minute 37 Seconds could use a cool bridge or killer outro dance break to really take it over the top. And New Jeans EDA 2 Minutes 31 Seconds might be the worst offender yet. EDA really needed to hit that 3 minute mark with a bridge or a cool outro that would have matched the catchy instrumental. Many albums for the early second generation groups, you can search for an album and it would be packed with 10 to 13 tracks giving you at least 30 to 55 minutes of music goodness. Now we all get our singles and many albums, third and fourth gen groups are setting for these short EPs releasing 20 to 30 songs over the year. New Jeans' new EP is only 12 minutes long and that's crazy. Some netizens are saying that these groups are making bank without even putting in the work. They're supposed to be making music and they're barely doing that. It does make sense for rookie groups like Lesser Ruffin because many albums will help them build that fan base fast. Sometimes an EP is perfect. Dreamcatcher's The End of Nightmare is amazing because it uses a shorter format to create a tight focus experience and the same could be said about Somi's Summer Holiday. Even with Shinny's time in, his mini albums are great but nothing really beats a full studio album because they take time to craft. Maybe because attention spans are shorter these days, people don't have time for a full album experience anymore and it feels like the K-pop world is just hopping from trend to trend. But for OG K-pop fans, this concept is still an alien one. With all these new trends becoming common, one thing remains constant, K-pop's ability to surprise. Only time will tell what trends will emerge next. Love it or hate it, K-pop groups do keep things fresh. Let us know in the comments which things you think are becoming more common in K-pop recently and whether you like them or not. And we will see you in the next video.